In this video, we will show how to perform a plate calibration on Exion LC-8E, Shimadzu LC-40 and LC-40CL systems. We demonstrate the calibration procedure, also referred to as teaching, using a Shimadzu LC-40 system. The touchscreen may look slightly different, but the operation is the same for all system types. Plate calibration should be performed if you either have never used plates before, you want to use different plate types, or if you have observed issues like off-centered needle puncture marks or even damaged needles. Check whether the issues can be solved by eliminating other possible causes before starting the plate calibration. Please refer to the manual or knowledge base articles on the Sykes Now Learning Hub. Note that this procedure will only adjust the X and Y position of the injection needle during sample aspiration. Adjusting the vertical position, that is the Z axis, uses the needle stroke procedure, which is not covered in this video. It is described in the user manual. Before starting the plate calibration procedure, make sure you have the following tools and items ready. You need to have three identical plates of the same type that you wish to use in the future. A mirror tool and a torch are also useful. If your system contains a plate changer, you must first disable it in the system configuration by setting the serial number to zero. Our first goal is to ensure free access and visibility to the inside of the auto sampler, which requires several steps. Pull out the sample rack and set it aside. Then remove the lower front panel. Now we want to dismount the upper front panel. Open the operation panel and attach the knurled screw at the bottom right. Push up the protrusion and turn the upper front panel towards you to remove it. Now we also want to remove the rack panel from the sample rack. Turn the two knurled screws fixing the rack panel and remove them. Now you can detach the rack panel. Next, place the three plates of the same type that you want to calibrate into front, center, and rear position of the sample rack. Make sure that their A1 position is oriented, as shown. Now insert the sample rack back into the system. The next goal is to configure the system. If you get the message that the needle is not ready, simply reinstall the upper front cover and then remove it again. It is recommended to shut down the system controller as shown. In case the plate recognition is activated, you need to disable it. Otherwise, the plates will not be recognized. Finally, you need to set the plate type for all three plate positions. Depending on which plate format you want to use, enter one of the following number codes. In our case, we will use zero for the MTP96 well plates that we are going to teach. Now we are ready to start with the actual calibration procedure. Remember that this will only adjust the X and Y position of the injection needle. Note that each position adjustment will only be saved once the entire process is completed. If you want to cancel a procedure partway through, click CE. Your changes will not be saved. On the auto sampler operation panel, follow the instructions as shown. Once you select enter, the needle moves and stops at the front left corner of the front plate, that is position H1. Our goal is to move the needle to the center position of the well. Use the arrow keys to direct it back, front, left or right in 0.1 mm steps. Selecting up will move the needle to the top. The function down moves the needle down in 0.2 mm steps. Activating shift means that the step size is increased. Use a sheet of paper to see when the down position is appropriate. This is the case as soon as the needle slightly touches the paper, but you can still move it. Select enter once you are happy with the position for the well. The needle now moves to the next position that is to be centered. Continue adjusting the well positions as prompted on the control panel. The following positions will be used for 96 and 384 well plates. As the positions at the rear part of the auto sampler are hard to see, it is best to use a mirror tool and a flashlight to find the best position. Once the adjustment is complete, you can see that the needle moves to the injection port. Now, your changes are saved. 
The next goal is to put the system back into operation. First, remove the sample rack from the auto sampler to reinstall the rack panel. Be careful to align the two parts correctly. The catch on the rack panel is inserted into the rectangular pocket of the sample rack. It is recommended to fix the position of the lever on the rack panel side with your fingers, as shown here. Otherwise, it may be blocked later on, and you will not be able to remove the sample rack. Fasten the rack panel with the two knurled screws. Check that the catch retracts upwards when the lever of the rack panel is pulled. Now reinstall the upper front panel. Make sure you align the yellow labels on the left, as shown. Turn the panel to attach it to the frame on the right and firmly lock it in place. Do not forget to refasten the knurled screw. Place back the lower front panel and be careful the power knob remains in position. Now install the sample rack again. And restart the system controller on the back. Optionally register your plate changer again by entering the serial number. And do not forget to activate the plate sensor function, in case you want to use it. It is recommended to check if the injection needle now correctly aspirates the samples from the center position of the correct well. Place plates that are sealed with aluminum foil into the auto sampler. In the acquisition software, create and run a batch that injects samples from the four corners of the front, middle and back plates using the recommended parameters. After the batch completes, check the position of each injection on all plates. This is what it should look like. If any positions require adjustment, repeat the complete calibration procedure. Run another batch using freshly sealed plates to confirm the positions are now correct. Finally, shut down the system to save the parameters, so you do not need to repeat the procedure in case of mainboard issues. Now, you know how to do a plate calibration for your auto sampler. Go to sykes.com support for further help on other topics.